Thanks for joining me today for the food plot season here at frigidforage.com. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about two subjects. Uh, the first one being maintaining clover plots, and the second one being uh, this plow down combination with planting big and beastie. Uh, in fact, let's switch up the order. Let's talk about the plow down and the big and beastie first, since I'm standing in this food plot. We started out here uh, with a clover plot, which was planted this one was actually planted a couple of years ago, but the plow-down product that Frigid Forage sells is ideal for planting in the spring or frost seeding during the late winter. That will produce a tall clover uh, plant that uh, at this time of the year, we're in the middle of July now, you'd come in and you'd plow it under, and that produces a really good and inexpensive uh, supply of nitrogen for your big and beastie crop that you're gonna plant on top of that. So you get two purposes or two benefits from that. Uh, first one being that you've got clover in your food plot rather than letting it go fallow through the spring and summer season. So you're feeding deer uh, even though the clover isn't at its uh, full, uh, let's say, lushness or thickness like you would have the second year of a clover plot. And then you can turn it under, get your nitrogen that then uh, goes into the big and beastie which produces a lot of forage through the uh, early fall and into the winter. And we've We've had a lot of success with Big and Beastie on this farm. Uh, in fact, we plant it every year, you know, numerous acres of it, and the deer really pile into it. It's a product that we really like. You know, we've got plenty of other food plots here. We've got corn and beans and clover, but yet the Big and Beastie really fits into our uh, overall food plot strategy here. So don't neglect that. And the easiest way to put it into the ground is just what we're doing here, taking a clover plot, turning it under, and then planting your Big and Beastie on top of that. So let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, we did fertilize this plot with a triple 13, which is your basic lawn grass fertilizer that you can get at most co-ops and a lot of stores, even Menards and, and uh, those types of stores carry a lawn blend. And since we are already putting a lot of nitrogen down with the green forage or the green manure, if you want to call it that, we don't need as much nitrogen uh, when we're fertilizing. Two things you got to do, you got to make sure you kill what's there by tearing the roots up, you know, getting the thing all, you know, at least loosened up enough so that the plant itself that's in there is dead, so that you don't have a lot of interference when you plant your big and beastie. It's not enough just to kill it and lay it on top because nitrogen is really volatile and as that plant rots, the nitrogen will just evaporate up into the atmosphere. So you want to make sure that you get it buried. You can mow it and you can bury it or if you want to, you can really even spray it you know, give it a day and then bury it. Uh, either way, you gotta make sure you get it in the ground. But the nice thing is, you know, the big and beastie's gonna take a little bit of time to germinate. You know, we don't have uh, rain in the forecast for a few days. We're gonna get the seed out, rain's gonna hit, big and beastie will germinate, start putting down roots, and about that time, the nitrogen will be more available uh, from the plants that we plowed under. And just about anything green is gonna have nitrogen in it. It's just that some things have more than others and the plow down blend that Frigid Forage sells has been fine tuned to have a lot of nitrogen content in the green forage when you plow it down. And now the next step is gonna be uh, planting the big and beastie. And of course you can do it with a drill. Uh, I'm gonna use the hand spreader. Three or four days from now, we've got rain in the forecast. And as loose and porous as this ground is now, that seed's gonna get pounded into the perfect depth with the next rain. And we'll get almost 100% germination on this food plot. It's not the same as when you're spreading it out into a soybean field that hasn't been tilled. Uh, you might only get a 50% germination in that case, but here we're gonna get close to 100% just because of the soil preparation and, and uh, the way that the rain is gonna treat that seed once it hits the ground. So that's, that's really our discussion here on the uh, plow down on the big and beastie. You know, there's a lot of other ways to plant it. Obviously, you can put a lot of fertilizer down and, and uh, you know, do the traditional method but this is really gaining a lot of attention, uh, in, 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 especially in the food plot circles, using the plow down method to increase the fertility of the soil. Okay, next I want to talk about maintaining clover plots. This is the time of year when I mow mine. Some people will mow them twice a year, I just mow mine once. Uh, generally, 
I have, a, let's say, maybe a two or a three year window for clover. You know, you're gonna get, the first year is gonna be the establishment year and you'll get pretty decent clover out of that the, the, uh, that fall, that hunting season. In fact, one of the plots we've talked about quite a bit already on the food plot season is one that we'll take you back to on this episode too. It's one that we call the Lone Oak Plot. And I frost seeded this back in March, I believe. We took some soil samples in there and did what we needed to to keep the soil in the perfect condition. And uh, just today we've mowed that. And what you'll see here is it looks pretty rough. You take all those broad leaves out and even some of the grasses when you mow, the clover comes back with a flourish. And you get uh, a, a lot of clover. It's really competitive. You know, you'd, you'd be surprised at how well clover does after a mowing, uh, cleaning up a field. That plot was a first year plot. This one is in its third year. This one's a little bit rougher. We might be able to get this year out of it yet. It looks like you know, there's enough clover in here that with another rain, you know, I think we're, we're gonna be okay here. Uh, this is one that you know, borderline probably should be uh, plowed down and turned into a big and beastie plot or something like that. But we're gonna go ahead and get another, another season out of this one. So you, know, you might get three years, like I said, that's typical for clover, but you do need to control the weeds. One of the best ways to do it is just to mow it. And I mow it fairly low. I like to get as close to the ground as I can. It just seems like the clover outcompetes the other weeds when you cut it off low, uh, especially the other broad leaves. You cut those broad leaves off close to the ground and they seem like they're pretty much done for the rest of the growing season. Uh, grasses are a little bit more aggressive, but there's other ways to deal with them also. And uh, I think we've already talked about that in the episodes uh, prior, uh, spraying them with a, a, a grass selective herbicide. If you start thinking about the, the advantages that you have with the plow down, uh, this field right here that I'm standing in is about an acre and a half. And if you did this with the plow down clover, you'd have the option of mowing it and leaving some of that clover for the fall and then plowing down the rest and using that for the big and beastie portion. So pretty good strategy overall. Uh, I like clover. I mean, the deer on our farm like it and they'll pile into it this fall. So I'm looking forward to hunting over this one and the other food plot that we've shown you earlier. Well, thanks for joining me today on the Food Plot Season right here at FrigidForage.com. We look forward to seeing you back here again in the future for another episode, and good luck with your food plots.